Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's getting down to that time of year again and the running to sale season. So what we've got to be doing today is getting the sheep ready for those sales. So we're going to be sorting out the shearling ewes as well as taking a look at the ewe lambs to see what kind of numbers we'll be selling this year and making some critical decisions, I should say. So I hope you enjoy it guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Just on the way to shilling ewes, look at those top lambs. They look like different beasts. Remember, I moved these earlier in the week onto this really nice lush grass and it's already making a difference. I don't know how well you can see. They are definitely looking a lot better than what they did a week ago. I know where they're going. Starting to look a bit like a sheep farm, isn't it? We've got shilling ewes here, we've got all the fat lambs in this field here, we've got the ewe lambs there. Good girl. Go on. Like clockwork. Oh, please get through the gap. Down the track they go. Go on. That is all the shilling ewes in and, and a couple of older ewes there, the ones with lambs that fuck, they're just in here so it's easier to keep an eye on them. But yeah, pretty simply, all we're gonna do here is spray everything from the bee flock with an orange shoulder. That is how we kind of see everything in the field so we know if something's in the wrong pen or anything like that. Just easier for management. And also, we are selling a few out of each group to a couple of people so it's nice for them to be able to pick them out so they know which are which. So we'll get on with that. If you're wondering what the speckled ones are, they're all Roussan cross clins and they're really, really nice, smart ewes. So we've got about 10 of those that are coming into the bee flock this year, which are what, out of the ewe lambs two years ago. Last lot, in it they come. Happy with these, I think someone do need to put a little bit of condition on, but in general, they're all right. Come on, come on. That's that one I got struck as the lamb, I don't you can see that. Go on girls, off you go, and that is the first job done. Well, we are having a little bit of a U-turn now, guys. We're gonna carry on with the lambs in a little bit and do exactly the same with them, but actually decide which ones we're keeping and not, an A flock and B flock, because we haven't even been through them before and done all that jazz. We're making a U-turn because for those eagle-eyed viewers that watch my Instagram, we went mowing yesterday with the big risk that the weather's gonna come good. We were meant to have rain yesterday afternoon, it didn't come, so Dad's weather predictions, his psychic ability, has meant that we've got 35 acres down that are being baled and wrapped right now. So the plan is, I'm gonna jump on the tractor and do some carting. As you can see, the baler's on it over there, wrapper over there, rake over there. So yes, away from sheep, roll with some haylage.
Right, if by magic the U-lambs are now in and we're going to be repeating what we did with the shearling U's, but I've actually got to choose which ones we're going to keep, which ones are going to go to the B flock and which ones we're going to sell. So we're looking at breed characteristics, so, ve so very similar to the tops, look at their noses, legs, pastons, all the things that structurally make a sheep, not forgetting teeth. And then obviously we're looking at performance. So this is why I have all the ewes here. And we want to know if they're doing over 200 grams a day, day live weight gain, up to 21 weeks old. Obviously a lot of these were done higher than that, up to eight weeks old and 16. But as they get older, that'll drop off. And we just want to make sure they're twins too. So they're throwing decent enough prolificancy. First of all, what I'm doing is going down these and looking at their teeth, their noses and their legs. And then anything that I don't like is getting an orange spot, like I said before. And then once we've gone through all them, we'll look at the ones that still are clear and look at their performance. That way we're picking off of breed characteristics and performance. And it speeds it up because it means I don't have to look at every single performance every lamb. Because if I don't like one, why well, do I need to look at its performance? First of all, look at this lamb here and check out its nose that's jet black so we don't want any pink spots or any little purple in at all then look at its teeth that bite is perfect i got that you don't know how well you'll see but right how we want it so it's not over or under shot and then in my head i'm just looking at its characteristics i want nice small ears so they don't want to be bigger than my hand like that which that one's all good we don't want any brown on its legs which we very very rarely get now if i'm honest so I'm happy with that one, and then we repeat that for every single arm. Good. Teeth good. Good nose, good teeth. Good nose, good teeth. Good nose. Just having a brief stop there, just to explain guys, just because they're big doesn't necessarily mean they're the best. So in here there is some smaller ones which actually have better daily live weight gains, but they might be three weeks younger. So that'll be a better sheep than where there's one big one at the front that's actually got poorer live weight gains. So that's obviously probably a single, but also it was a big lamb when it started. So it's live weight gains won't be as good as say this smaller, I say smaller, medium size you here. Biggest isn't always best, that's what she said. Definitely looking better than what they were two weeks ago. The difference, just putting on some fresh nice grass, a wormer, an overboost, oh, phenomenal. That overboost stuff does always get them looking good. Nose, teeth, good. Car. Hear it? Wow, girls. Teeth. Good. Nose. Teeth. Good. So this shoe here is the first one I think I've had that's not had a pure black nose. Just look, you see what I mean by it's just not right? That doesn't meet my standard and it doesn't meet pedigree standards. So she's in the B flock. By being so strict, it just allows us to breed better animals quicker in the future. If I let her go, even though she's a nice shoe, it's just going to affect us badly going into the future. So the stricter you are at the start, the easier it is long term. And I know that because at the start we had quite a few with that problem, but now, nine years on, I hardly ever get any with pink noses. Another black nose. Good. So muggy today. Where is she? This is one of my favourite ewes here. Really like the head on her. Go on, stragglers. Here you come. Come on. Here on. And that is them all shedded off. So we've got all the A flock in here, we've got the B flock over there and there we're going to run them back through and just scan them all into the groups if there is any a flock that i don't like now i will just pull them out and chuck them out but quick glances they look all good really really nice bunch of lambs and you'll really see the difference you had these side by side in two pens
So this first group here that's going to come past back into the field is the beef flock slash lambs that I want to sell. So that's this group here, some really nice ones in there. Which then leaves the A flock and a lamb that won't go over the fence. We might need a little bit of persuading. Mucky arse thing. Go on. Got some new, new clippers coming so we can sort them out. But yeah, that's the B flock slash lambs that I've pulled out to sell. There is 70 in there, which leaves the piece de resistance. So these are all the ones that I'm keep. All of the A foxes, all of these will be keeping as replacements. Just got to scan them into the system and let them out into field. But yeah. Gotta say, this must be the best group of ewe lambs that I've bred. Like, it keeps getting better every year and the performance is getting slightly better. We're lifting the standards, which hopefully means long term the flock should perform better and better as we go on, as well as pedigree standards. We're getting stricter with that too. There's certain things now I'm trying to pick out with my own breeding to get them a little bit more consistent, which that's consistent, if I say so myself. Well, that is another good job done, and thankfully that grey cloud passed over and we didn't get too wet, just slightly, but not too wet. They're all out back in the field, we've got 55 A flock lambs, we've got 71 B flock, not forgetting there's also some show souvenir added to them. So yeah, really happy with that, good job's done, everything's sorted, ready for the sales now, we'll now pull any of those out um, that people are going now, if anyone wants to come and see them, we can pull them out really easily, split them off. We're not having to shed them all every time. So really happy. Thank you for watching, guys. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and tap that like button. See you next time.